Hello and welcome to the League of Average Gaming. I'm your host, League Master Gentinord, bringing you Age of Empires Definitive Edition. First campaign up, of course, is the tutorial campaign of Egypt, the Ascent of Egypt. Take your first steps in Age of Empires by experiencing the story of the world's longest continuous civilization. As the guiding spirit of Egypt, settle along the fertile Nile River, wage war, and unite the kingdoms of Upper and Lower Egypt with Narmer, build the great monuments with Hatshepsut, and venture into foreign lands and to conquer the Nubians and Canaanites. Experienced Age of Empires players may start with Scenario 9, the River Outpost. I am a fairly experienced Age of Empires player, but I want to show you guys the full campaign. So maybe if you don't have the game, you can't play through it, or if you just, uh, for some reason, are missing how to move or something, maybe this will help you. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start from the very beginning and go through the whole series of this campaign and hopefully if uh, you guys enjoy we'll continue through the rest of the campaigns and on to the other games you know age of empires 4 is coming out um, months from now so we uh, need to get prepared so egypt is a land blessed with plentiful plants and wildlife making it an excellent place to settle your wandering tribe of hunters and gatherers even though your people have primitive technology and rely on stone tools they are skilled hunters Establish a small village on this Nile Delta island and grow your tribe to seven people. All right, so this is the first of the tutorial missions, Hunting Island in the Nile Delta, 8000 BCE. Objective, grow your tribe to seven villagers. Town centers support only four villagers, so we must build a house, which will support another four more villagers. Houses cost 30 wood each, and villagers cost 50 wood each. And... That is what he just read to us. Hunting. To assign a villager to hunt, click the villager and then right-click the animal to hunt. For example, to hunt a gazelle, right-click it. The villager hunts the animal, gathers food, and deposits it at the town center where it is added to your stockpile, as shown at the upper left corner of the game's screen. Creating villagers. Villagers cost 50 food. To create a villager, select town center and then click on the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the game screen. After a brief, brief training period, the villager appears beside the town center. Building houses. Houses cost 30 wood and each house supports four villagers. The town center also supports four villagers. Build a house. Select a villager. Build, click the Build House button in the building panel in the lower left corner of the game screen and then click a location on the map. The house is shown in red if you cannot build in a particular location. To display the objectives while you're playing the game, click the objectives button in the upper right corner of the game screen. For more tips on achieving the objective, click on hints. To open this page again while you're playing the game, open the menu and click on the scenario instructions button. All right, so. Hence, one, you must hunt gazelles and elephants to increase your stockpile of food in order to create new villages. As your population grows, you must build new houses to accommodate the new units or else you will not be able to create any more new ones. Villagers can move around gazelles and hurry them closer to the town center before hunting them. This decreases the distance the villagers must travel to carry the meat to the town center, where it is added to your stockpile. When you hunt elephants, you must use a different tactic than when you hunt gazelles. Elephants will attack the villagers that are hunting them, so instead of moving around the elephants like you do with gazelles, you must select a villager, shoot the elephant, run away, and then when he's almost out of range, turn your villager around and shoot him again. If you repeat this process, you can lure the elephant to your drop-off point where you can easily kill the elephant with multiple villagers, and you reduce the distance your villagers must walk. Food from dead animals deteriorates over time, so it is more efficient to assign more than one villager to gather the meat from a kill. Beware of crocodiles. They tend to eat unwary villagers who wander near the shore. Crocodiles and other predators can be hunted and provide food like gazelles, but at a much lower return rate. Since the dawn of our species, humans relied on hunting and foraging for survival. They lived and hunted in small groups, moving along the migratory tracks of large animals. Meat was complemented with berries, roots, or other edible plants for a diverse diet. Egypt was one of the most, one of the first regions to be inhabited by humans due to its mild climate and its proximity to eastern Africa, where the first human ancestors evolved. At the end of the last ice age, the Sahara Desert was very different from its modern state. It consisted mostly of savanna grasslands where many species of large animals grazed, making the Sahara ideal for hunter-gatherers to survive. Cave paintings and stone tool production sites have been found from this early period as cultures like the Badarian and Nakwada spread throughout Egypt. 
stone circles similar to Stonehenge were built in a place called Nabta Playa to the west of the Nile River, near a great and now extinct lake. All right, enough history hints and instructions. Let's play the scenario. Okay, there is a gazelle. Already got villagers. Oh no, we're running them off the wrong way. We're running them all the wrong way. We want to run them closer. Yep, go to the town center, please. I don't know if we'll go any closer than that, so we're just gonna get him to go. All right, uh, and no, in is repair. He was house. The key to this game is hotkeys, and any multiplayer RPG setting, you really gotta get the hotkeys. So Q is this first one. So Q is villager on the town center. Q is build a house, and you're on a villager. Can we do shift? No. We have to have him finish. We can't queue up orders yet. Alright, the house is done, so we only need a few more villagers to be done with our objective. Which, of course, this is, these are going to be very easy objectives here. This is just the first mission. Teaching you how to play the game. Very similar to, if you've never played this one, but you have played Age of Empires 2, uh, this is like the William Wallace campaign from that one. Age of Empires 1 takes place earlier time periods, um, up to about Rome, I would say. Uh, I believe the first expansion to the original Age of Empires was um, Age of Rome, or, or something, Rise of Rome, perhaps. Uh, Age of Empires 2 is called the Age of Kings, so it's, you know, around a thousand and forward from there. And we need one more villager. So, I mean, we're set. Like, there's no bad guys, there's no enemies, it's just us on the map. But we're gonna win here, but that is just, see, I would not normally kill that guy so far away from the town center, but it's just a matter of, uh, now. We are victorious! And that's how you complete. The first the hunt mission. is a success and your tribe grows. You and your people will raise many sons and daughters in this land. Huzzah! For generations, the rich hunting lands along the Nile have provided for your people. Now a series of droughts have withered the size of the herds and forced your kin to forage for new food sources. Fortunately, the banks of the Nile teem with fruits and edible plants. Hunting bands have returned from the east with berries, dates, and leeks. Find these forage sites and collect food for your growing tribe. Once you have enough food, settle in this rich area by constructing a granary, storage pit, and dock. All right, so this is the second mission of the tutorial campaign, Ascent of Egypt, uh, foraging Nile Delta 6500 BCE, so 1500 years after the first one. Objectives, collect food and then construct three buildings. Granary, 120 wood. Storage pit, 120 wood. Dock, 100 wood. Read all of that to us. Chopping wood, chop wood, click a villager, then right click a tree. The villager chops the tree, gathers wood, and deposits it at the town center where it is added to your stockpile. Down in the upper left corner of the game screen. The more villagers you assign to chop wood, the faster your stockpile grows. Foraging for food. To forage for food, click a villager, then right click a forage site. Berry bush. The villager gathers food and deposits it at the town center where it is added to your stockpile, as shown in the upper left corner of the game screen. The more villagers you assign to forage, the faster your stockpile grows. Construct buildings. You must construct houses of 30 wood to support your new villagers. In the town center in each house supports four villagers. You must also construct a storage pit, 120 wood, granary, 120 wood, and dock, 100 wood. Before you construct buildings, you must have enough wood in your stockpile to complete this task. Construct a builder, building, click a villager, click the button to the of the building to build in the building panel in the lower left corner, and then click a location on the map. The building is shown in red if you cannot build in a particular location. If you want to build more than one of the same building, press shift and then click multiplications on the map. 
display the objectives while you're playing the game, click the objective button in the upper right corner of the game screen. For more tips on achieving the objective, click on hints to open this page again while you're playing this game. Open the menu and click on the standard instructions button. All right, let's get some hints here for you guys. One, you must forage for food to create villagers and chop wood to build houses to support the new villagers. You can put the new villagers to work chopping wood as well as constructing the other required buildings, storage pit, granary, and dock. Forage sites are plentiful across the river, which you can reach by crossing at the shallows. Villagers automatically deposit food from foraging at the town center or granary, whichever is closer. Building a granary near the forage sites decreases the distance villagers must travel to deposit food in your stockpile. Villagers automatically deposit wood at the town center or storage pit, whichever is closer. Building a storage pit near a stand of trees decreases the distance villagers must travel to deposit the wood in your stockpile. Storage pit is also a collection point for stone, gold, and food from hunting, which are not used in this scenario. History. Prehistoric humans were opportunistic and found food based on their environment. On grasslands, hunting was the major source of food, while coastal environments favored the gathering of shellfish and the eggs of seabirds. A river, valley, or a delta such as that of the Nile was a very fruitful location due to its abundance and variety of plant and animal life available throughout the year. Some of the nomads who arrived in such rich riverlands found that they could subsist permanently in the area and settled the first villages. The first of these settlers of the Nile were likely drawn to the river by the increasing spread of the Sahara Desert. Although North Africa is mostly desert today, the Sahara was once covered in grasses and low shrubs. The transition to an arid climate was not gradual, but occurred in two specific episodes, first between 6700 and 5500 years ago. It was less intense, but later climate change lasting from 4000 to 3600 years ago was severe. Summer temperatures increased sharply, rainfall decreased, and the grasslands withered. This event devastated many ancient cultures and their way of life. Tribes were forced to migrate to the Nile, where the river's annual flood deposited fertile silt, allowing plants to grow in the Nile's banks. These migra migrants contributed to the emerging small communities along the river. All right, and you can see that we're moving up a little bit. There's a nice little map here for you to see where in Egypt we are. I guess the blue is where we were. We're moving up more into the delta. It's just, it's kind of backwards. This is the, the lower Nile, and this is like more upper Nile, as if the river flows up backwards from what you might think looking at a map. But enough! Let us get to the scenario. Alright, we'll go find some food. Alamos. And you need to queue up some villagers, and then you need to build a house. Alamas. We can Alamas. field all of these villagers. Alamas. Alamas. Not Alamas. finding Alamas. any food Alamas. right now. All right, let's just get this storage pit since we need it. Probably the wrong order. Probably want to get food before you get wood, but Alamas. I'm not finding any. And these guys, since they built the storage pit, automatically start chopping wood. Um, oh, it's over there. Oh, I'm so blind. The berry bushes were right next to our town center. Alright, all of you guys are assigned to food now. Completely missed these berry bushes. And so, I mean, this is the definitive edition. This is in 4K. But, um, it's... This was upscaled from an older game than Age of Empires 2. Things are a little more clear in Age of Empires 2, which I've played a lot more of. But I want to get the time scale. You know, the Egyptians and the Numidians and the Greeks and the Persians and the Romans before we move on to the more medieval, the Franks and the Britons and the Teutons, things like that. A granary needs 20 more, 10 more wood. Yeah, 
yeah, so I don't have enough wood. I know that. Once I get enough wood, though, I want to go build it over here. This looks like the shallows that they're talking about. They're kind of more grassy in Age of Empires 2, and I guess this is just like a little lighter blue. There we go. That's green. Get some more wood for us. Definitely need it. We're gonna get that dock. Although you're the the only the last villager left. I want you to build some more housing. These bushes will exhaust. They're not an infinite resource, of course, as and neither are the trees or anything else. They all will eventually run out, but I want to use these before I start doing these. I would probably do these in multiplayer just because there's less walk time from there to there than here to here. But again, it's just, uh, just us. It's a solo map. Not even an AI to play against in this scenario. Oh, you're just sitting here. The idle villager button. It's period. Useful to make sure all you want to make sure all your villagers are working. If they're not working, they're wasting time. They could be working. And we haven't even got to any there's no research yet. It's just the, the stone age. So we go further on. Oh, we can just go straight to the town center right here. That's neat. Only you'd have to hotkey where your town center is. You can't have more than one. Queue up, that's all we're using this food for is. Sounds. You can chop down that tree. Up them up. And you can build Bombe. the dock. That's the last thing we need for this one. Yuri? You can help. Alright, we look pretty set here. And I do have a nice summer. You can see that you've got five villagers on wood, you've got three on food, and you've got ten out of your twelve cap. It's because these guys are building, so they're not actually up here. And the dock is done, so we are victorious! Huzzah. Though the desert sands have encroached on the grasslands, the banks of the Nile still provide for your people. Your tribe no longer wanders after the herds, but has begun to build a home here on the river. All right, and so that is the second scenario here in the tutorial campaign. Uh, I think I'll put a cut in here, and so we will continue on with the tutorial campaign on the next video. So thank you for joining us here at the League of Average Gaming. Been your host, League Master Jinchenord. See you in the next one.